And welcome back to the Off the Clock Show. Joined once again with your host, Sean Gervais from the Orbisex CRM, as well as Marshall Hill from the Pints and Polishing Podcast and Hyper Clean Car Care Products. And also the guy that helped me understand soft wash. <laughs> I recently cleaned the concrete around my pool. And uh, it's a whole other story, but I got to kind of, none of the products were working at, you know, Home Depot and all that stuff that I tried. And I got to make my own. So I, I was Marshall for a day. Let's just put it that way, you know? It's <laughs> fun, isn't it? Oh, That's so man. much fun creating stuff. Like. Yeah, yeah. It, it really was. And seeing it work, like trying different ratios and then seeing how it affected things. And, and I'm telling you, it was exciting. And uh, I tried a lot uh, of and, different stuff first. But. Yeah, inside the conversation, it, we've actually had to create something very similar, which is what, you, what we're talking about. like Because yeah. uh, Marine Line and stuff that we'll be, we're in developing and we'll be releasing is uh, going to have a mildew cleaner, right? So, uh. I mean... Which is perfect, and it's something I'm going to even pick up for my pool. <laughs> it's always good to have all those those products on hand. But, uh, but yeah, it was pretty cool um, this weekend. I... So, oh, in uh, testing, I have just what um, you probably picked up, right? Shock chlorinator. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and you can only buy them in gallons. It's 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 a very particular product. You can't buy it in in large quantities here. You got to go to a pool supply place. I get them. That's your only place you can buy them here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's it's similar here too. There's a lot of stuff like even uh, things for our hot tub. Like there's this one I think it's mm -hmm. called Oh Yuck or something like that. And it's same thing. It's it's to clean the pipes so it filters through the pipes. And you know, there's because everyone sees the buildup in a hot tub that's around like the you know the rim or on top of the surface. You know, and you clean that obviously, but you don't think about oh the pipes and uh, so they build up with stuff. So it's all those little kind of things, you know. But that's where I'm telling you, I think there's a huge opportunity uh, even for my own shop with boats because uh, we do a lot of stuff right now for like coatings things like that for boats um, but i'm seeing there's a whole other side that we haven't even touched yet um, so i gotta figure that side out because it's a different thing like transporting boats and where you do them and so on and so forth so uh yeah i don't know i'm i'm, I'm looking at some options because one thing i was thinking halfway between our shop and the yacht club that's one of our clients there's an airport hangar and they have several hangars there. And I was there because I'm, I'm looking at possibly taking up some helicopter, you know, pilot stuff going on. Anyway, I was asking them, I'm like, what do you guys do uh, with those empty hangars over there? They're like, Oh, we rent them out. I said, Interesting. You know? So I started talking to the guy and he knew we had a dealership and he didn't know too much what else we did. And I said, uh, yeah, we have a detail shop. He asked me if we wanted to get into detailing planes. And I was like, I don't think so. Not as yet. It's, it's a different, it's like the same, but different, you know, I'd have to look into like the insurance side and the, the logistics. There's certain things you can't do or put on car, like planes and stuff. There's a new company called Sparrowhawk that you might look into. You can actually, if people are interested, you can actually get a, a distribution for your area. They have airplane detailing already set up, no like way. the manual, the chemicals, the, the wraps, like it's like uh, plane detailing in a box. Oh, I love it. Okay, that's yeah. going to check into that for sure because uh, our shop is right near the main airport, um, like the the international one, and then we also have uh, well, there's tons of like smaller ones, but the one that's near us is a special one because it's right near the main airport, and so what they do there is a lot of training stuff. So it's a perfect place to get in because when people start learning how to fly, that's where they all go, even from mm -hmm. you know all the other smaller airports. Have you always wanted to fly? Has that been a yeah. thing? Like yeah. I, I've flown before, like planes and stuff though, but I want to do a um, uh, helicopter now. Uh, that's my, mm -hmm. my next bucket list item. But uh, my wife, my wife said not allowed to buy a helicopter. That's the the only thing, you know, it's all those yeah, you and damn celebrities. And Kobe, we, we <laughs> ruined it. <laughs> yeah, nah, exactly. You know, and, and with my luck, you know, <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, I've always, I was in air cadets when I was a kid and uh, I came from a military family, you know, so everybody, we had yeah. rolled in something, you know, and, um, but yeah, I uh, was in air cadets for almost three years. And so I flew gliders, Cessnas, things like that. And uh, yeah, there's some <laughs> funny picture, actually, 2019, I was trying to send a selfie to my wife and I'm in a Cessna. And so it doesn't turn like a car. So when you turn the wheel, there's a delay before something actually happens. And then it happens. So you don't want to turn too much. So I'm trying to take a selfie and I'm just easing into it. I'm easing into it. And I go and I get the perfect shot. And you know that whole don't look down thing? So I'm actually terrified of heights. Well, because I'm in selfie mode, 
I saw myself and then I saw the ground wow. and I was like, oh shit. And I dropped my hand and then the plane just started to just take it. Oh, oh my God. Anyway, got it all corrected, you know, figured it out. But uh, then I, once I straightened out, I was like, okay, now hit send. <laughs> I was like, so the whole like, don't text and drive. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's funny. So one of my, uh, one of my best friends, Stuart, he is a pilot for uh, Delta. Oh, no way. Nice. But we roomed together. We were friends in high school and then out of college, we roomed together for a little bit, basically, right? You're drinking buddies that just hang out, just go, right? You know, you yeah. hooligans. <laughs> 22 for my birthday, he rents a Cessna and awesome. flies to Stillwater, which is OSU. Uh, it's about an hour away, uh, you know, driving, flying. We still took about an hour, right? Yeah, so he yeah, went yeah. everywhere, was, right? Yeah, During, exactly. <laughs> went up and he goes, watch this. And I'm like, what? We're over a lake. And he just, my head's turned this way Sick. up at the top. And I'm squealing like a girl. Yeah, yeah. I have no problems to, to yeah, like, no it problem is to what it is. Like, <laughs> terrifying <laughs> i'm i'm the guy that you know the belly comes up it just i can't control yeah. like it comes up here and i'm like oh like yeah i, I can't it's, do it's, it i don't do heights i don't i'm with you i can't yeah. did you see what was it uh will smith and uh oh. who was mission impossible guy oh, and they went up on uh, the dubai tower and took pictures yeah. it was like uh, he's got his, his his shoes off like he's just hanging out like it's normal and i'm like yeah, you're know, right. You know, stay right. Will Smith's got it. He's locked in. He's got security <laughs> all around. <laughs> exactly. That would be me. I can't do that. Totally you know. Yeah. <laughs> or what are those? Is it New York or one of those where you go up in that thing and then it leans you over? Have you done that? Oh no, I haven't done that. But we have. It's an like all glass that. thing, and then it leans. Mm -mm. No. Nope. Yeah, no, I can't nope. do it. Can't yeah, do it. Us here, we have the uh, the CN Tower in Toronto. We have this thing called the Skywalk. And you basically they they just strap you to this little thing, and you can walk around the the disc that uh, in that part, I think I don't know how high that one is, but uh, it's it gets struck by lightning all the time. I'm trying to remember. They have a glass floor there too, and then they you go up another like sixteen floors, so it's uh, you're already up I don't know like eighty floors or something ridiculous. And then there's the big ball that everybody sees in the pictures, and then there's if you look close, there's a tiny little ball there. And you can go up even higher. And one year, I went to CN Tower, and it was just before they did the Skywalk. Thank God, because people probably would have tried to convince me to do it. But we went, we had my daughter with me, and she was young at the time. She had a teddy bear. And it's important because when we were in the elevator and we started to go up, she gave me the teddy bear. <laughs> I was up against it because it's a glass, glass floor elevator, glass floor, everything. You're just going up. And I'm like, oh, man, I can't do this. She hands me a teddy bear, and that's where I was like, no, no, I'm okay. I had to, like, be strong, you know, because like, I don't want my daughter to see that. But I was terrified. So we get there. But prior to us going up the elevator and starting this tour, we go, we check out the line, and literally there was, like, 10,000 people there. It was insane. And they have a little thing that tells you how long you're going to wait in line for. It. And it was, like, three and a half hours or something. It was insane. My wife at the time was pregnant, and she was, like, five months pregnant. It was hot. It was July. She just didn't feel like waiting. Nope. So she was ready to just bail. And then I saw this lady walk around. She had these like special badge things on. And it said like CN Tower tours and all this stuff. So I was like, I wonder if they have a special thing, you know? So I went and I saw this little elevator they had on the side. And I said, hey, what are, what are you selling? She's like, oh, we have these VIP tickets. You can skip the line and you just go right now, right up that elevator. And it includes all the different stuff. Yeah, it was like done deal. So it was like 300 bucks a person. I'm like, let's go. We go up. I'm thinking, okay, I'm not not liking heights. I'll just stay to the edge of the glass floor and whatever, whatever. We're there. You know, they tell us the history and all this kind of stuff, whatever, we're doing the tour. And then she says, all right, and now we go into this elevator and we're on to the second part. And I'm thinking, another elevator? Like, are we going back down now? And so she's like, no, we're going up. I'm like, we, we, we already went up. Like, lady, we are up. And she says, no, no, there's another 16 floors. <laughs> I just about threw up. So we went up there. I'm glad I did, though, because it was super cool. And it's it's a lot more like enclosed. You, you can't because I don't want people to like jump. And people apparently used to throw stuff off. I don't know. Anyway, so it's uh, you're just kind of like looking at the city through this thing. But she told me they were building this thing called the Skywalk. And they'll attach a little rope to you. And you go out and you walk 
around the perimeter of it and you're just like hanging on oh man hell no my cousin did it he's good with heights nah me i'm, I'm okay i'm okay on the ground planes i'm okay unless i see the ground then it's uh so i'm trying to the reason for the helicopter is i want to conquer that fear in a way and so i'm gonna start by flying some robinsons or something and just uh you know something that's a little more the bulb and then you can look out and you can you know because uh, so for me the way i plan on conquering it is my buck one of my bucket list is to to jump i gotta jump out of a plane damn okay i've never done it i that me neither damn. Me neither i, I want i want to dive i want to cage dive with sharks and i want to jump out of a plane you should just yeah. jump out of a plane two. into a cage and then the sharks come. Absolutely, that would be the best. That's the way to do it. Yeah, that's a Jason. Much, I, I would love that. Be great. But I'd probably miss the cage and I'd fall into the right into the shark. The sharks. Yeah. So you know, I might as well not try and be awesome. Yeah, that's just, true. Uh, yeah. I mean, story is awesome. Just, just be normal. Just be normal. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I what to be awesome at this moment? Yeah. What I might do is just climb a ladder. You know, we'll start there. Eighty steps. <laughs> man you know what i, I, I was, get on my chair and jump yeah yeah exactly stand up fast <laughs> yeah. but i was always uh jealous of the people that you know those guys that built like the empire state building and stuff oh and yeah stuff. those guys are crazy they're just like yes yeah, seen back in the 50s lunch. yeah that's or yeah. 20s or whenever it was yeah and they're yeah. chained onto something and they're just sitting there hanging out eating their lunch yeah. you've seen that like chicago or exactly. some of the big cities and they show them like back in the day just Hanging out there, eating lunch like it's a normal day. Yeah, like that's crazy. You know wow. what I mean? Yeah. yeah. Now, like uh, even in our city, I'm sure it might be similar in yours, but uh, we have this working from heights program. So if you do any job that involves a four foot ladder or more, you have to take this whole program to get a certificate for working at heights and stuff like that. And I always think back to those guys and I'm like, what kind of what kind of safety training? <laughs> Nothing. Just Maybe a little bit of whiskey. I don't know. Yeah. Make sure you clip this on or you'll die. You got it? Exactly. Got you got it? it? Understood. Yeah. yeah. That's all you needed to know, really, you know? <laughs> Jesus. Oh, man. Yeah, those guys are superheroes, which makes me think, though. So this... Uh, yeah, go ahead. Superheroes. Listen, speaking of superheroes. All right. You have one. Mm -hmm. You have a superhero. Do I? Yeah, for sure. No, I, I know you do. Oh, <laughs> they scored a goal for Canada. Canada made it to the next round. Like, I had a feeling we were going to bring this up again. <laughs> you do have a superhero. Like, it's true. This is going to be one of those. You didn't uh, watch the game. I sent the, it to you yeah, while yeah, we were yeah. watching, but unfortunately, you were having some other issues. Oh, yeah, I got my AC repaired, though, which is good. But uh, yeah, we have a baby here now, staying with us for a bit. And uh, man, it got hot last few days. Anyway, uh, yeah. I didn't know the revolving door of Sean's house oh, was yeah. still moving. Still, still moving, baby. Still rotating, huh? Okay. Still rotating. That's a, uh. See, a little advice: if you can, if if whoever's listening to this, if you're living in like a, a small apartment or something, just stay there. Stay there forever. The minute you get more rooms, somehow people just go in. Like, yeah. Anyway, it's uh, but it's it, there's pluses and minuses, you know, but the. Yeah. Four months. <laughs> but but yeah, no, yeah, uh, yeah. So the revolving door is still going, but just like that, the Canadian team is also still going. So there must be something in the air. <laughs> must be something in that maple syrup. Yeah, hell yeah. That's but yeah, so so we have a superhero. Yeah, that's uh for now. For now. Yeah. You scored you know your goal. We we need a to win though. Go. Canada needs some wins, you know. We've been um uh, I don't know, kind of uh, like with our whole like prime minister situation and like just everything. We're always like the, the butt of the joke, you know, so it's you know, it's probably why you hired an American coach. You know, it's part of why you're six. You know, it is it is what it is. You know, it is what it is. <laughs> once I learned that, I went, oh, yeah, it makes sense. Oh, That's now it makes sense. sense. Yeah, this yeah. <laughs> why you only scored one goal, you know, as a Canadian you an American coach. coach so. Yeah. <laughs> That was the one. That's all you need, just progress, just a little you, bit of progress. You one. That's all you need, you know. That's it. progress. Jesus. Oh man. Yeah. So speaking of uh, you know highlights, though, um, I had a highlight this weekend, and I watched the new Beverly Hills Cop movie. Um, oh yeah. Yeah. It was it was nice, man. I hadn't watched a movie in my cinema for about two. Eddie months. Murphy. Yeah, Eddie Murphy. Yeah, Axel, and. Uh, 
it was interesting this time because I don't usually get to watch like a remake of an older or a continuation, I should say, of like movies from my childhood with my kids very much because they either, you know, the new ones suck, you, you know, that it, when they wait so long and then it, they drop something, I find that I'm like, ah, I'm not watching this. And then my kids now, they, they all want to, they're all into the like, you know, Fast and Furious 48 or whatever the hell it's on, you know, all these different types of things. I just can't watch them. So anyway. put it on didn't tell them anything about it and they started getting really into it i was like oh man this is wicked so anyway there were so many throwbacks for me which was awesome but um the biggest thing i liked is that it wasn't too over the top it's almost like they used special effects from like the original movie like it was i don't know how to explain it you'll have to watch it I think it's, yeah, okay it's, yeah yeah it was it was mm. it was a lot more just focusing on the dialogue and the story and, and stuff like that so It was pretty good. Yeah, it'll be a good throwback. But uh, so we watched that, and there were two others we watched because uh, we did like a movie marathon thing. Uh, one of them was Babes, which was actually pretty funny, um, but it's more like a rom com chick flick type thing. Yeah, the women were in the room. Hey, it's fine. But uh, man, but the, what was the third one we watched? Oh my god, I don't remember. But it was uh, and it was like superhero based too. That's what made me think of it. It's gonna come to me uh, the name, but it was. It was also good. And then we started watching trailers and we ran through a bunch of trailers of what's coming up. And I don't know if they got the writers back or something, but there seems to be like, like there's like two or three Mark Wahlberg movies dropping back to back. Then there's um, Will Smith's got like five movies coming out. Like it's, it's crazy. I don't know. They're, they're just pumping out movies now back to back. Maybe production. Well, we had a year or two with very little. Very little. Yeah. That's why I was surprised, you know, yeah. maybe they were just stockpiling it. And then, uh, <laughs> oh no, man, it's strange, right? For a couple, a little bit, it was they blamed it on Corona. Yeah. And then I something happened. I don't know. You're right. Like somehow, I think less actors or something. Like we all complain about, you know, employees. I guess, uh, I guess that even also goes into Hollywood. It applies maybe. in Hollywood too. Hundred yeah, percent. I don't know, but you're right. It, it it's been pretty sparse over the couple of years. Uh, you know, I wonder if some of it has to do with, uh, you know, the amount of people are talking about the amount that the internet and these other, you know, takes where you can have Netflix movie and you can have, uh, uh, you know, then a, you have to get each uh, of the subscriptions if you each want to of their own. And yeah. I, I wonder, I wonder if that's, I wonder if that's kind of pulled. I wonder if, if we actually do have more movies in theory being produced, but we're so spread out now. Then maybe we don't know how many movies are actually coming actually, out because our feed and our world is programmed by you AI people that tell us everything we want to see. Welcome. <laughs> we don't know anything else that we're missing. Yeah. You know? mm -hmm. That's true, you know, and that's that's probably it because I noticed my YouTube. Uh, so I, I watch a lot of like I subscribe to certain channels of people that make short movies. And I watch those because oftentimes I don't have time for a full movie most times. Like, I just don't, you know, like I, I have time for like a 20 minute short film or something like that. Unless it's a movie I really want to see that's really good. Um, I just watch these like short movies and I'll do that while I'm, you know, like doing the dishes or cooking or something like that. Uh, but often it's documentaries. And I've noticed that my feed, even across other, uh, because like we have all of our TVs are those like smart TVs. And so it's all connected where you have one search. And it just tells us which one of our things it's playing on. And then we can just, you know, go into it. Um, but I've noticed that my main Google algorithm has been factoring in all the things that we stream on, you know, if I watch stuff on Prime Video or if I watch something on, uh, you know, Netflix or whatever it is, it'll actually change the stuff that I'm seeing on my YouTube uh, because the TV itself is based on Android. So it's, I don't know. It's kind of interesting to see that, you know, and you're right. I think it's like where we get the information it's dictated. So yeah, there probably is. There's probably hundreds of new movies out there. I just don't, man, there's no, uh, I feel you. I'm not, I just kind of say that, but I feel, yeah, I feel like there's not as many. I'm mm -hmm. always looking. We've said it. We seem to rewatch movies more than we can ever go mm -hmm. find. And there's a new movie I mean, out. I never know when new, I never see any new movies. I think, when you go i think maybe one month ago or so when we went and actually tried to look at some movies that, let's just say there was eight movies four of them were horror movies yeah, yeah. it's like Jesus. this is odd like <laughs> strange and like yeah, yeah. springtime to have oh, half of the cool. movies being horror movies like yeah. it's hmm. 
it's true that it, because that's more like a fall leading before Christmas thing for me. I'd say even in fall, it'd be strange to have that many, like oh, half I mean, of the movie. Like, you didn't have that many at one time, period. Yeah. And I just go, hmm, maybe there's just not like nobody's produced. There's not enough movies being produced. You Listen, I, I watched Fall Guy and I talked about that. We are in the middle of it going, why would somebody make this movie? Like, why are we here? Like, this is. You know what? We had it in our list because we hadn't seen the trailer. But based on the actors and actresses, we were like, oh, this is maybe something to look at because there was nothing okay. else here. Then when you and I talked about it, removed from list. It was like, yeah. no, good. Yeah. So I did go watch the trailer just to kind of get the gist. And I was like, oh, Marshall, spot on. Like, there's no yeah. way. Yeah. yeah. This is, yeah. Thank you. Thank you for saving me. But especially because I think I would have had to buy that one. I don't remember. I think I was looking in YouTube and it was showing in YouTube movies or something. Anyway, would have been a waste of time either way for sure <laughs> but uh yeah there's some some good ones coming out though that's for sure all right i'm looking forward to it we just had ben affleck going back as batman like fuck that dude is that what's happening I yeah even... apparently oh. i don't know he's yes. turned his life around you know he's he's back with his love of his life and <laughs> he's now back with disney and says he's going to be doing oh, batman great. it's like okay great so we get that shoved down our throats jesus this is Anyway, there's only one movie I saw with him where it was like half decent. Uh, it was uh, the town? It was he, he was okay in the town, but honestly, anyone that's seen the town can attest. I'm sure it wasn't something that needed like a super powerful act. He, he's a guy that's never done anything to me. I've never just you know you just go you don't like certain people. Yeah, you yeah, don't yeah. know why. You just go I don't like you. Yeah, yeah. And so I don't like any of his. I don't like like. Yeah. yeah. There would have to have been some movie that he played a kid. It would just, that would have had to. Got it. What? Got it. I know the movie. It's what? a movie that I talked about recently. Uh, Thank you, sir. May I have another? And uh, there is old school. They're high schoolers. They, uh, uh, they uh, beat up on young kids. It's all about. Uh, anyway, dazed and confused. Oh shit! Okay. He was an asshole in that movie. Yeah, he went so around makes... beating up the kids, and he was the biggest asshole of it all. Maybe when he's an asshole, you're like, yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> like, I wonder if because of that, and it was so early, right? I would have watched that as a young teenager, right? Probably a tween, a tweeny, yeah. right? Like yeah. a an in betweener. Yeah, yeah. I, that would have. I bet you that's why I don't like him. I, I really bet you it is. Now that I think about that it. Moment. I it's bet you that molded into it. why I'll never like him as a. It happens. It does. Like it does. You know, yeah. There's certain characters you. There's people that come on the screen you just don't like them, and I. Yeah. I, get, I bet you it's because of a role, and yeah. something that he put. Like I bet you that's what it was. Some people love him. Some people hate him. I think most people hate him. I think most people hate him. Yeah. I think he so. always plays a bad guy. Maybe that's why too. He's always a bad guy, except for some bad people who typecast themselves, you know, and it's yeah. like it's mm -hmm. their, their thing forever, you know, yep. and that's. Pretty, yeah. You know, it, okay. This is a mini tip I have to jump into actually, because just made me think typecasting. We, I was telling you a little bit before we jumped on is that uh, we had uh, not a situation at our shop, but we had, we had something that had to be addressed. We put it that way, because uh, it's not that anything happened. We could see something going down a certain road. And so typecasting. So someone acting a certain way or just their, you know, something, it's just like, ah, just drives you nuts kind of thing. Right. And we have this guy, he's been with us for three years. He's great. Does a good job. He's doing everything he needs to do. He's doing it well. It's just kind of his attitude. It's kind of just, eh, you know, and so we noticed maybe he was getting a little, uh, I don't know, tired, lost his passion. But like, he, there was no performance decrease, right? But we noticed that because he's, you know, basically having other people shadow him and he's training them on certain things that they were kind of developing that same kind of you know like eh, attitude and so we're like we could see this being a problem and so typecasting that's exactly what it was i was trying to think of the word to explain during the meeting and i couldn't think of it but what we don't want is someone getting typecasted as being a certain way when they haven't had their chance to be something else but how i explained it to uh the whole staff was uh we were gonna you know do some things and make some changes and kind of just stir things up and it all started for me watching this documentary on children wearing capes 
And you're probably thinking like, what the fuck? <laughs> and so, it, but it had to do with productivity. So they took a bunch of kids and they got them to do some tasks and they, you know, saw how long it took them, how energized they were, how motivated, so on and so forth. And then they took another group of kids and they had them do the same task, a bunch of stuff. And then they took the same two groups of kids and they got them to do some other things as well. But one group, they left as they were and let them just do the tasks, timed them, saw how productive they were. The other group of kids, they had them all dress up like superheroes and they put capes on all the kids. And the kids that had the capes on finished everything 30% faster. But they weren't like special kids. They were the same kids that did the other thing. So they were like, okay, but to see if there's a real correlation, let's get, get them to do more tasks and get them to keep wearing the capes and see if they continue to outperform the other ones. Time and time again, they crushed it. Nothing different about the kids, just that they had capes on. That's it. And so we started doing this cape thing. Um, so what kind of cape we're going to put on this week or what kind of whatever. And you might be thinking, like, how do you do that in your business? <laughs> like, do you actually put a cape on? And the answer is, yeah, you do. And so you know that guy at the end of the street waving a sign, that is Sean. Yes. His business. That's exactly. Cool. Auto world. He's, cape on, <laughs> he's got the tights. <laughs> 100%. And so, no, but what we did do is we completely changed all of our uniforms. Um, so we've had the same uniforms and we ordered the same design, the same colors. You really went with tights. Really? Yeah, Everybody no. wears tights now. Everyone wears tights. Yeah. <laughs> no, you're like, Canada's yeah, really. doomed. <laughs> yeah, like... <laughs> know, guys. It's not a terrible idea, but that's not the route we went. <laughs> yeah, so... No, what we did do, though, is we completely changed it. Um, and what we did, we put everyone's name on the back. And so now they're kind of like players in a way. So we made this team thing. I'm telling you, people are boosted. And I was like, okay, let's, let's see how long that lasts or something like that. Man, people are boosted to the point. I went to the grocery store, bumped into one of our guys and he was wearing the shirt. I was like, Jesus, wearing it out. And he's like, yeah, it's like, I, I like it. He would never wear the other one out. Never, not because he's embarrassed or something, but more because it's just, oh, it's my work shirt, you know? But he was telling me, and this is one of the guys that I was worried about was going to kind of go the lazy route, and I wanted to, like, boost him up and stuff. And he was telling me, he says, man, he says, I, I feel like I'm part of something bigger, like, than what it is, you know? And he really felt like something. And it was nice to see something put into practice that I thought might have been stupid. I had to convince everyone. I was like, man, just just trust me on this. Just, just take a chance, you know? I told him the same thing. I told him the story about the kids with the they they asked me actually the same thing. They said, "Are we going to start wearing tights?" And I was like, "Well, maybe. We'll see how it goes, you know." But they, I don't know why everyone's jumping to that. That wasn't the, <laughs> it's the capes. <laughs> but anyways, um, little changes like that I found uh, have always had massive impact in our business, and that that was a, a good one recently. That's that's not my tip for today, but that's a mini tip. We'll just throw that one out there. But uh, one yeah. of the bouquet. One of the bouquet, exactly, yeah. But typecasting, man, I was trying to remember that for the life of me. I was trying to remember what the word was uh, because I was telling the guys, listen, you don't want to come to work every day developing this guy's habits that are working for him because he's producing 100%, but then you're new, and if you're not producing the same level, his attitude isn't something you want to adopt, and then management only sees you for you know certain periods throughout the day. They're not following you around. So you're going to get typecasted, but I couldn't remember the the word um, because that's, that's a problem with employees. You know, they, it's that resentment that builds where they are doing a lot of stuff, but management doesn't always see it. And so we always consider, you know, it's just part of a team. Da, da, da. And we never really ask like who did this X, Y, Z to a fine level. Um, you know, we focus on certain things like who did that car, who finished that, who installed those windows, who did whatever. Um, but little things that happen, like if a, an area is clean, we'll walk in and it's just clean. I don't look at it and say, oh, who swept that, by the way? So what we were finding out is that this kid has been cleaning after the guy that he was shadowing. He's been cleaning his area and stuff like that for him to help him out. And we had no idea. But uh, anyway, so through talking with him and stuff, but that's where I started to realize he was going to get put into a box that we wouldn't have seen all those things that he was doing. And uh, anyway, typecasting. I just went on a rant there that what happened at my shop, but it's, it was a... All right, Peeps. I I want to talk about uh, an interaction from this weekend. Uh, two interactions. All right. I briefly talked about them on on our episode yesterday, and I, I kind of I, I enjoy sometimes 
having something I, I talk about once and then get to rediscuss in a sense here and chop on it a little bit nice, more. Sometimes yeah. I do, I do like doing that. Like I, I'll take that as a some time to have a marinade and then you can. Yeah. 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 Like a little marination. And, and this, uh, this interaction was with the detailer here in, in Tulsa. Right. Oh. And he went and took a nine to five job. Yeah. And I, first of all said, good call, man. Yeah. I immediately wanted to reinforce the decision. You got a family and you're struggling. That's the best course. Job. Take the job. Like as somebody that went through a divorce, trying to start a, a small business, we're all going to say we're small bit like business, large, but whatever you want to call it, like starting a business. And, and you, and it's yeah. tough and you got some modern. issues at home. Uh, take the job. If you value the family and value that part of your life more than being by yourself and trying to, to, to get a business going that hasn't been successful. Like yeah. it seems smart to go ahead and just take the job. Like, so I immediately told him, man, congrats. Good job. Good call. Like probably the best decision you, you've made. Like I, it's a lot of us that, you, you, you go down with the Titanic that you really shouldn't have. Like there's no reason to go down. Like, yeah, like, nobody's everywhere. Like most people are going to say, okay, cool. Like then nobody's going to judge you. Like yeah. stop thinking that 100%. way. Yeah. It's so he, he said though, he's going to rebrand. Okay. And, you know, change some stuff up. And that was going to, set himself apart in the market. Like that's the answer. I'm going to take a job. Cool, man. Good. Congratulations. But I'm rebranding. I'm changing my logo. And, and that's going to set me apart in the market. Um, so he's going to still have the job, but to listen. I'm sorry. I'm trying to figure Me too. I just went also, wait, you think a logo? Yeah. Is that all you have to do? Am I wasting all my marketing dollars and my time doing everything? Like, damn. Why didn't anyone tell me? All I need is a logo. Damn. Right. So there's a there's a saying by John Wayne, and I'll I'll uh, try and put it into my terms. I don't exactly remember word for word. So, but John Wayne. For those of you who don't know, go look him up. He's a fucking badass from old days, right? Uh, said something about life is tough. It's even harder when you're stupid. Mm. Right? No, it's even harder when you're ugly. Uh, okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> life is hard. It's even harder when you're ugly. I say business is hard. Yeah. When you're stupid. Yeah. Right. And this is kind of what Nick talked about yesterday when we talked like, so other conversation I had was with a young mechanic who had started his own business. And we took one of our vehicles there that my wife needed fix for her business. I didn't need to understand every word that was being said. And I didn't. I could understand that they were both talking about how hard it's been. Mm. Right. He made the comment. I told him, congratulations. He had left his place, stars on. And he goes, oh, it's hard. And then they just started. Uh. Right. She's yeah, yeah. trilingual, so she got to speak Spanish. Uh, I'm eight years of Oklahoma education Spanish. There we go. So that'll right. kind of give you the the gist of it. I took a lot of Spanish one over again. I could just even in that understand they both were going on and on about the difficulties mm. they're having in their business. We see, uh, I saw today in a group, I see uh, multiple times uh, throughout the week, people across the country closing down. There was this guy, like I just mentioned, took a job, right? Like, business is hard, according to a lot of people. And I would say that if it was easy, everybody would do it. So, yeah, it's <laughs> not easy, right? Yeah. Uh, but it's easier than it was a hundred years ago. 
It's easier than it was 50 years ago. It's easier than 20 years ago. Yeah. I I was joking, which I told you, like my brother-in-law was in earlier. Uh, and I was telling him because I had to go. And I was like, hey, I got to go do this episode. And Sean, I'll explain who you are. And I go, man, if I would have had that technology, right? Like, yeah. Oh, man. <laughs> Be like fishing with dynamite. (laughs) Uh I can, I can, I can appreciate. Which we had Aaron. We've had other people on. We've had different. Yeah. Certain, certain half a percent of people do begin to rise. Do see? Okay, yeah, it is difficult. And if it was easy, everybody else would do it. Uh, it's going to be hard if I'm stupid. So I need to be smart at what I do. Yep. How do you be smart at business? If you're not smart in general. At first it sounds easy. It's like, how do you be smart at business? Millions of answers. If you're, if you're not, not smart, Generally. already smart that's right uh, that that is that becomes then why so many people say it's tough yeah it's hard for people who aren't able to play chess yeah right few people can play chess few that's yeah. why it's a more elevated game more yeah. smart people than checkers yeah like everybody okay. can checkers, you know. Anybody can checkers. Think on the box it says like two plus or something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But but chess. That's right. Story. Yeah. So if you're not smart, please don't go to school. Not what you should do. Yeah. If you're not smart, well, doesn't mean you should quit. Mm-mm. Nope, yeah. that's not what that means. Business is hard for people who aren't smart and they aren't resourceful, I would say. Yeah. Right. You can fill in the blank, right? Yeah. And don't do this. And mm. right, then I'm gonna do my ABT, right? And go, but but <laughs> you have the opportunity, which we didn't have. Mm. You have so many opportunities that it's okay if you're not smart. If you rely on other companies to fill in where you're not smart. Yeah. Fill in the blanks. Yeah. I didn't say people. Yeah. I didn't say people. This is the part of business that I love B2B. You do need to sell stuff to people. You do need to, but I believe if you're trying to fill in the blanks, for you, you're going to try and hire somebody and you won't do good at it. You actually won't succeed at hiring the right person. So I do believe you should go bring on a contractor. Thousands and thousands of businesses hire contractors every hour. Bring on a contractor, not good at labor. Bring on somebody who's skilled at Hiring, firing, uh, payroll, and those are called staffing companies. If you struggle with customers, boy, since you're already listening and if you're listening and you haven't subscribed and haven't really done the full <laughs> Orbis X ball, like, uh, yeah. yeah, let's go back to that stupid, like, Hey, business is going to be tough if you're stupid. Don't be stupid. Be smart, right? How many things can Orbis X do so that you don't have to think about you? The amount amount of hours that you would have to, and you, you don't have the time, you don't have the intellect to remember it, and you can't read that well. That's me. Yeah. So I'm just saying everything that I've always tried to do. I've realized where I'm not great at things. And then I realized that I need to bring in support 
to do that. And that support I found has always been best with a contractor, with somebody that also has his ass on the line. He knows what it's like to be in business and wants to support somebody else in business. And he's probably, or she's going to do something that they're great at to support you, the he or she, right? It's not necessarily, he apologize. I always say he, but it just is what it is. Uh, here's the last thing. And I'll just throw it out because it, I'm not, uh, I'm not ashamed to do it. I think there's few people that have the information of running mobile detailing and running mobile businesses, running car care businesses, running detailing businesses than my partner, Nick, and myself. I think there's few people in the industry that could ever have the amount of information. So do you think that maybe we know how to craft some products? Maybe Revive would save you some time. 10 minutes? That's why I love uh, Josh. Uh, he... Uh, he listens. Uh, he actually posted in our group, and I, I love this. He, he's, he's gone from throwing products in the trash from another company to only using ours, right? And then went with Aaron, got all the education with Orbis X. His shop is booming to yeah. now he was posting in the group. There's a guy that came in to get a coating. Then they spent hours talking about how to care for his car. They, the guy walks out with hyper clean products because he's a distributor. And now, now he sees this long tail of his business from an interaction that wouldn't have ever happened. Yeah. If it wasn't for you. Yeah. It wasn't for what you've done, the experience that you have and, and what you do as a business to help support other businesses. Same as if he was still using that, car wash brand that that sold recently right i just absolutely love that he did that video and he throws his car wash brand in the trash and then became a supporter using uh handcrafted car care products made in america i get it canada i understand but <laughs> say north america yeah yeah <laughs> the best Canadian. It's, it's like yeah. when it when it's... you can see that hey i don't have to be and i I don't know Josh's IQ. Would imagine he's listening and if somebody wants to message him, hey, are you smart? I would imagine he would look across the world and go, no, those people are smart people. I'm an average person. But an average person, because they're, listen, they they take the advice and they bring in the support of what you do and then what we do. He's having growth beyond what his wildest imaginations Absolutely. while we have other people that are just floundering and, and struggling and you just go, guys, you don't have to be, you don't have to, it's not hard. You don't have to be smart. Yeah. Just bring in the right companies to help support your business. That takes away so much of your headache, so much of your stress, and it is a much easier path to go around. Yeah. And that's where, man, that's fantastic tip by the way. And I think that, I would argue the same thing. I would say resourcefulness will beat out stupidity and even intelligence. Like it'll beat out smartness as well. I think you need the resourcefulness because uh, my old neighborhood, we had this guy, Dave. Oh God, Dave used to drive me nuts. And uh, he was one of those guys, neighbor that always had to be the smartest guy in the room. And, you know, he spends all his time researching facts online and he'll come and be like, well, actually he's the king of, well, actually he's just got some fucking thing to say. He drove me nuts. He had a business and he was always asking me, he's like, you know, how's your business is doing so well. And my security company's uh, kind of floundering and stuff. And I have problems with my employees and this and that and all kinds of stuff. And he's like, he would say this to me and he used to drive me nuts, but it's no point arguing with fools. And, you know, maybe he's intelligent, maybe he's not, but he's definitely a fool. But he would say, how's my business not doing better than yours when I'm clearly the smarter person? He would say that to me. And I was like, God, if I didn't have to wake up and still live in this neighborhood, my God. <laughs> you know what I mean, but... I also started to realize he's just an idiot. He may be book smart. He may be whatever, whatever, you know, but I'm a lot more resourceful. I use my resources like crazy. I do a lot of prep work for our podcast, but outside of that, a lot of the stuff I talk about are things that I've experienced through our own business and research that I've done for my business. We use all kinds of stuff. We use Orbis X, but we also use a lot of other technology. 
And technology is not just things on computers. It's products, it's our extractor, all kinds of stuff. And we, we do a lot of things, but I also talk to a lot of business owners and ask them, you know, what things are working for them, what things aren't. Just resourceful. A lot of people always tell me, they're like, oh man, Sean, you're so smart. I'm like, no, 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 no. <laughs> I'm just an average guy. <laughs> I really am, but I'm resourceful. And I think that further to your point is that you have to be in business. And I think the expectation people have is that it's going to be easy at some point or, you know, it's going to be easier than they thought it was. I, I hear that same thing all the time. People say, oh, business is hard. Oh, my business is really hard right now. It's really hard. Like, no, it just requires certain work or it requires you to work smarter in a certain capacity. And a lot of that is, you know, joining forces with the right people. And that could be through, you know, like you said, getting someone that's good at the skills that you're lacking, fill in those gaps. And a great example is that company I was telling you about, uh, I don't know, two or three episodes ago uh, that I started for my buddy who he needed work. He was already doing work for other companies, but he had he wanted more. He, he was kind of a, you know, and he was having trouble finding a place that was going to treat him well because he was in the roofing industry. As we all know, those those guys don't pay very well. And it's kind of, you know, it, it's it's rough for the roofer, you know, it's uh, anyway. And it draws a certain crowd. Sure. But sometimes you find a diamond in the rough. And, and this guy, he needed uh, he needed a shot. I said, well, if you're having trouble finding a good place to work, why don't we just make a job? You know, and so I sat and talked to them. I said, you have to understand you will technically be owning a business, but. The goal here is we get you a job that you appreciate and one that, you know, pays your bills, takes care of your family, one that's, you know, relatively easy, frees up some time. You can set your own schedule, but keep in mind, it's going to be just as much hard work. And so he was like, yeah, it makes sense. And so I said, look, you have pieces that I don't want to do. And those are the blanks that needed to be filled in. I said, I always invest in new businesses, new opportunities, and this could be one of them. I said, I'll set something up. We can take care of the marketing and stuff like that. And for that, we're taking a hefty percentage. But you'll only have to just go do the work, talk to the customer. I'll coach you through some of the sales side, how to, you know, start the sale, finish the win sale, win. follow up. Exactly. And I said, so win-win. Because I saw the pieces that he did have. And so is he a really good, you know, slick back hair salesman? No. But you know what he has going for him? He's honest and he genuinely comes across as a nice guy. You know, mm -hmm. he comes across as the average Joe that just, I'm here to help, you know? And so it automatically disarms the homeowner and he's fantastic at following instructions. I gave him some tips in the beginning. I said, listen, after every job, ask them about something else. So your whole time you're there, he, usually we do a, a lost leader thing where it's like cleaning the gutters. So it goes to clean the gutters because to get those customers costs almost nothing our main goal is to get to the roof. And so when he's up there, he's cleaning the gutters. Take a look at the roof. Does it need repair? Does it need replacement? Oh, you got a skylight. We can coat it. That's what I told you the other day. Mm -hmm. We used mm -hmm. coating on it. You know, all these little things. Upsell, upsell, upsell. To this day, he's been book solid and he has not had one job that he didn't upsell. Not one. It's insane. And the other thing he does before he leaves, he says, which one of your neighbors is your favorite? And they're like, oh, I really like Tom over there. It's like, perfect. Walks over. He's like, hey, Tom, knock, knock, knock. That's the other thing. He's not scared to knock on doors. Perfect. Goes, knocks on the door. Hey, I was just doing, you know, Trevor's house there. Da -da -da. We cleaned his gutters. He told me you guys are good people. He said he's not sure about the others, you know, but you're good. Start with a joke, you know, personable. He, he's just been crushing it. So he's got those pieces. If he was to have tried to start this on his own, he would be one of those guys that says, man, business is hard. I don't know. It's really tough. And he, he would struggle because you need to identify those gaps and then have them, you know, filled in. But, uh, but yeah, so man, great stuff, man. Mm. Well, you know, speaking of conversations this weekend, I'll dive into something because I got into a little bit of a conversation that I, I sent you some, some info about this weekend where I was told I made a typo. I was told, uh, it sounds horrible. That's what one guy said. It sounds horrible because of a statement I made. And I usually don't comment on certain posts because I just know the answers that people are going to get. And I know it's going to turn into a thing in some of these groups. Uh, but this was a post in not, not our group, but another group. And the guy was asking about commission structures and paying staff. And I only posted because I saw one of our members post in the group. And he said, I asked the same question a few weeks ago and I got terrible answers and sometimes no response. So I was like, shit, there's a lot of people out there wondering about this. Maybe I should just chime in something. 
So I did. I chimed in something, and I was surprised to see that there were more people anxious to dispute someone else's contribution versus fucking contributes, you know? And so that happened with me. They disputed my contribution. They, they said, sounds terrible. One guy said, oh, there must be a typo. There's no way. I'll get to what my response was in a second. But um, then I saw that guy's reply to other ones, and I was like, oh, okay. And that's where I realized it was the same situation. We were dealing with someone that just isn't smart. You know? And so what happened in this case is they asked, how much commission do you pay? What's a good commission to pay for a salesperson? And there is no concrete answer because a lot of factors vary there. Uh, depends on what your cost of living is. Like in Toronto, you've got to pay people a lot differently than you would in Ottawa, the city I'm in. And you'd have to pay them a lot differently than, you know, there's smaller cities around me. A lot of factors contribute in there. However, what you have to realize is the real answer is a lot. You have to pay salespeople a lot. What does that mean? Dollar figure, percentage wise, it depends. But reality is without sales, you have no business, period. You're one of the guys that posts in the group saying, what do you guys do when it's slow? Hey, is anyone else experiencing a downturn in the economy? You end up being one of those guys. What, like, why do you even have, to, if you have that much free time that you're slow, why are you posting in this group? Get off your ass, go listen to podcasts like this, for example, study, go knock on some doors, go hit up parking lots, go to car show. There's a million things you can do, but asking for this magic, you know, bullet that's going to apply to everybody, it's not going to be there. It's definitely not going to be in some course someone's selling you for like four ninety five or something. And they used to be a detailer, but then weren't a detailer and then went out of business. Anyways, I won't go down that road, but Point is, I replied, we pay our guys 30% across the board. And I gave some reasoning and justification behind it. And that was basically my answer. And the reasoning and justification is that that's the forefront of our business. And a lot of them opt for percentage versus like a salary of any kind. So legal the best salesman always will. 100%. And that's a good telltale sign too. During an interview, if you ask mm -hmm. them, what would you like, salary or commission? If they we hired a guy that chose the what? more salary, less commission. Yeah. <laughs> and I went, what? Yeah. Oh, I didn't think you would have done that. Oh, yeah. now I know who you are. Crap. Like, exactly. It's like, oh, shit. <laughs> yeah. Because the guy that gets purely commissioned, like you have to think as a business owner, we are pure commission. Absolutely. We are. You know what I mean? I'm pure commission. 100%. If I don't convince customers to get their car detailed, to always be selling, shit, the people that came to clean my pool today, the, it's her daughters came the first time. They all work for the same company. Her daughters came the first time. I gave them a $250 gift card to my shop. I said, you guys drove here in a work van. Sure, it needs cleaning at some point. $250. Done. Because my actual costs on that aren't $250. To them, I gave them $250 value. But what I really gave them was maybe 40 bucks. You know what I mean? It's nothing. If they never use it, great. It still has that, oh, he thought of us. They clean my pool like rock stars. Best case, they do use it. And then they keep coming back because of the experience that they got, right? I get all the money back that I spend on the pool cleaning. And then guess what? Her mom comes to visit. Oh, by the way, I was talking to my daughter. She got her car clean there. She said she had a great time. And, you know, I, I'm in the back and I have the grandkids there and da 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 da, -da. And You guys do tinting? You sure do. You know, boom, leads into more conversations, everything like that. So it's just, but that's me, 100% commission. That's my, I get no base pay. There's no salary. There's no nothing. It's, I'm 100% commission. If I'm not doing my job as a business owner, the funnel stops, period, right? A good salesperson, they will know that. And they will know that sky's the limit. So you mean I could get X percent of any sales? They're going to get amped up. And the higher that percentage, the more amped up they're going to get. That's how you attract the high quality salespeople. And it's not by, oh, well, yeah, I'm going to pay up 5%. That was the, the suggested number from several people that were commenting on this. And I thought, 5%? Jesus, I'm not going to sell shit for you for 5%. I'll take the job if I need it in between until I find the next lily pad I'm trying to jump onto. But I'm not here to stay. I'm not here to crush it. You're not going to get the best of Sean. 30%? My ears are peaked. Like 30%, eh? Like anything I sell? Fuck, I'm grinding hard. And the reality is, in this industry, 
If you don't have the margins to support that, go back to the drawing board. Go right back to the drawing board. Because if you buy a pair of pants, a pair of pants, at, I don't know, 200 bucks, let's say on average, okay? A pair of jeans, right? The margins on those pants, they're not making 5%. 10%, they're making like 400% or something, something crazy. They have to because they've got to pay the commission, to the salespeople, they got overhead for the rent and this and that. They have all the same things. I don't know why us as detailers, we feel we're exempt from all of the, the same kind of principles. You need to have the margins to support 30% to your salespeople when they're doing sales. And that being said, like I said, not all things are equal. And so we do our own sales as well internally. So we run ads, we put the ads together, things like that. That bypasses our salesperson for the most part because it goes to our receptionist. She just puts it in. Our receptionists are paid salary. They're not doing sales to that capacity. We have people dedicated for that that are doing upsells, people that are reaching out to get new business, new dealership contracts, all kinds of stuff. Those are the sales that they get paid on or... If it's a customer we did acquire through, you know, our Google ads or Facebook or wherever it is, if they upsell that person, absolutely. But what we do is we factor it into our price. So if we know we want to make, you know, $50 on something, we're not going to price it at like 65 or whatever for the customer. No, we're going to jack the price up and it's his job to sell it now or hers, but it's, it's their job to sell it, sell it at that price. They're going to sell it at whatever price. So they get the 30% included in that, right? And that's what I think a lot of people aren't understanding. But definitely, like Marshall, five percent. How how motivated are you to go sell for some company? Like, is there any motivation there at all? Like, like if it's here's the thing, commission for realtors is uh, here in our city. It's around four and a half to six percent. But the purchase price is like four hundred thousand to eight hundred thousand on average. It's a big difference. If you're getting 5%, it's like a $200 detail. Like that's insane. That's ridiculous. It's mm -hmm. like, it's not happening. And that's for people, in my opinion, that are very short sighted because you're looking at it as what you're paying out today for someone that's going to keep drumming up business for you. Yeah. No mm -hmm. But now that customer's yours, that's just the cost of acquisition. It's now your customer to do whatever you want with. Right. So it's, it's just, Oh my God. I, I think we pay probably 10 to 20% at least of our purchase price uh, to Google. So that's Google's commission. You know what I mean? Um, if I factor it out, it might even be as high as 15, you know, for getting new customers with the cost per click and all that stuff. And you want to pay a human being 5%. It's crazy. You know? So anyway, so my response back was, was about that. And that's where, it led me down this rabbit hole with a bunch of people and some people were getting it. And the main guy, Mike, uh, he's great. And he appreciated the feedback that someone finally chimed in with some, something that made sense. And he understood and he made a comment that I thought was a key thing that people need to understand. And that's where there's two different sides of the spectrum here. There's volume. So if you're selling something that's, you know, a low dollar value, let's say you're selling something for $150. The only way you're going to be able to sustain the business is through massive volume. But if you're selling something that's high dollar value, low cost, for example, to produce, that's where you don't need as high volume, but you do need a better experience, of course, right? And so that's where at our shop, we've got both tiers. And so our detailing, we make very little on our detailing on the initial visit because of what we pay with commission and things like that, but we still profit. And so that's where we're gonna urge people to reconsider how they do things because we push out a large volume of detailing. So we still make a lot of money, just not as much as our PPF, for example. Mm -hmm. But the dollar amounts are substantially different, right? right? But we don't do the same volume of PPF as we do details. Mm -mm. Right? So overall, they'll bring in similar dollar amounts into the company. But in terms of cost of acquisition, giving away 30% on a PPF doesn't phase us because the margins are that much higher. But similarly, when the dollar value shrinks, the percentage also shrinks in a way, like the percentage number stays the same, but the dollar amount shrinks because it's only $200 versus 2000, you know? So it's, I think that's where people are getting confused. So anyone that's paying their guys 5% and struggling with sales, that I can tell you right there is your issue, 100%. It's the lack of motivation from the lack of funding that that person's gonna get. 
there's no incentive. There's almost no incentive. Now, if you are paying a higher percentage and the sales team isn't performing well, there's other factors that you have to look into. But I would say that's rarely the case. I would say that's in those cases, it's more hiring dumb people. It's hiring the wrong people, uh, which brings me to my last point, which is if you're a company that has to have massive binders with policies for employees, don't watch Netflix at work. Don't, you know, take 15 smoke breaks. Don't this and that. If you have to continue to put policies in place for things, you're likely hiring the wrong people. And at Auto World, we have very, very few policies. Most of them are just common sense. And so we don't need to have them written in a booklet because we hire the right people. Uh, so we hire resourceful people. We hire smart people. It takes time. But asking the right questions in the beginning will help. So Marshall, if you had come in, we were interviewing you for a sales thing, I would have asked the same same question. You looking for salary or would you prefer more commission? What would be your, you know? And the person that says salary, that's the person I'm going to say, how do you feel about detailing? Do you, uh, you interested in, you know, detailing cars or maybe- How do you feel about answering not, things? Yeah, yeah, exactly. You're not, you're not doing fucking sales. <laughs> Absolutely not. But the guy that's, uh, like, if I, if I had to go for a sales position, I'm taking a commission every day of the week, 100%. You don't even have to pay me a base, just pure commission. But I want that commission to be high, and I'm going to be a rock star, and you're going to you know, cramp up your fingers when you're writing my checks. That's what's going to happen. <laughs> you know. But, uh, but yeah, so tip for the week, based on that debate that I had, is pay your salespeople properly if you want to keep them, if you want to motivate them and you want to actually generate some sales, don't get so hung up on the initial percentage. The initial percentage is virtually meaningless in the grand scheme of things. I would literally be willing to make zero dollars on that initial vi you know, visit of a customer in order to retain them because it's all about the second, third, fourth, fifth, 10th, 20th visit, all of their friends, the referrals, the Google review. It's all those pieces of the puzzle. And so you solve that initial problem of that percentage for the salesperson, let them rip. That's that's my two cents for today. True. Good one. Yeah. yeah. 100%, man. <laughs> and uh, yeah, percent. <laughs> By the way, I remember the name of the, the other movie. It was called Reunion. That was the mm -hmm. other movie we watched. And it's not about superheroes. I got it confused with one of the trailers we watched. But uh, it it's an okay movie, you know? And so... Anyway, it was a group of high you school. You watched people. the trailer for Deadpool 3, didn't you? Yeah, I did. I did, actually. Oh, my God. Can't wait for that one, though. But I'm ready. Yeah, yeah. Trust me. That's good. Stepson's 10. He was trying to finagle his way. How do I get in that theater? I'm like, I don't blame him, man. Let's try and yeah. figure it out. <laughs> Let's try and figure it out. <laughs> Absolutely. It's just, he's got a case of Benjamin Button. You know, he's, just, he's, he's going in reverse. He's actually 80. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Oh, man. Yeah, that one coming. And uh, the, the last Bad Boys one. I'm waiting for that one too. Uh, I know it's in theater, but I, I don't do the, the crowd thing. I'd rather just watch it home. We have a theater here. So I'm like, yeah, I'm good. And then everyone keeps telling me, oh yeah, but it's online. You can find it like places to stream. And it's like some lower quality thing. I'm like, nah, man, I'm not, I'm, I'm not watching the last one. <laughs> and it's some camera, some guys holding up like, nah, I'm good. Oh, wait, man, it's fine. You know, patience, right? Patience is... I used to watch every movie with the guy holding up the camera. Like, <laughs> oh, like, I used to watch. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, well, back when I've shared the story, but yeah, having a cell phone company and doing all that stuff, you find all yeah. those different people across the across the pond. They're doing, yeah, that, yeah, yeah. Uh, Have some little black box that you can, you know, <laughs> hack into. And then we were hacking into when they first came out with... Uh, uh and the fire sticks oh yeah could, yeah you could hack a fire stick and yeah is it Ro not royobi that's the but oh. it's something like that it's some ro some and then we would download that and then yeah you could basically just uh go into some streaming network it was and they would get shut down you know the early ones would get caught and they'd get shut down you have to go find the next one there was all these patches and plugs and i was finally got tired of it but you could find some that were pretty decent, you know, like it's true. Yeah. What if somebody walked across the screen, you know, it's okay. You're yeah, watching a movie in your couch yeah. when everybody else had yeah. to go to the theater. And this was, you know, 15 years ago. That's true, years ago yeah. least. Like, I mean, this was actually weren't that bad quality. So no. I saw two back then. Yeah. They were yeah. pretty decent. And uh, mm -hmm. good ones would be where 
if they had a camera where finally someone would actually sit still with it, not mm -hmm. bouncing around here and there. Uh, but then if they dubbed the audio somehow, yeah, probably, you know, those ones were the good ones. Cause then at least the audio was super clear too. And then, yeah, those were the good ones, but uh, it makes me think of, do you know who Kim.com is? Mm. No. Okay. So Kim.com, uh, he got shut down. He was running servers in a major way for, for that whole thing. The FBI raided his his house in where the hell was he? Somewhere in Europe. I don't remember exactly where, but he went to New Zealand because they had a no extradition thing to the US or something. And uh he went there and they still tried to like raid his place. But anyway, it was some crazy shit. But they estimated that he was responsible, his website, mega upload, for four percent of the internet traffic. Now, when you think you're like, oh, four percent. That's, that's a lot. Big, that's but, a lot. Yeah, of all internet traffic, that's insane. And uh, it, it started off as something that it was a genuine thing. It was kind of like Dropbox or Google Drive, somewhere you could just upload files, mm -hmm. right? And of course, a lot of people used it for other things. Mm -hmm. And then they had an affiliate thing where if someone like downloads your file so many times, you get points, points redeemed for money or PlayStations or whatever kind of shit. And so people obviously, let me upload the latest movie and then... I get a lot of downloads and I get yeah. even money and stuff. But, uh, but yeah, anyway, he got shut down. But he, actually, you know what? There's a documentary on him. I'll send it to you. It's actually, he's got a really interesting story. I, I think at age like 14 or something, he, he's a German kid. And he uh, he hacked like the, the German equivalent of the CIA website or something and got in. And then they tried to hire him to like do some work. Like, Man, he's got a crazy story. He's one of those like super, super big dude though. Like he's like, huge overweight but he, he's always got these famous because he always had like a, a yacht 15 helicopters like just crazy random shit and people were like how do you get all this money you know and it's, when you've got four percent of the total internet traffic and a brain to monetize it you can uh you know just like that but yeah he's, he's got a documentary he went through his whole house when he was on house arrest and uh he's got this xbox room and stuff it's pretty he's pretty interesting interesting yeah, yeah send it to me i'll watch yeah. it yeah, yeah, it's pretty interesting. I, I love, it's kind of cool when you see like modern day like like pirates, like someone that just like yeah, goes, yeah, he's a modern oh, day oh, pirate. You're right. Yeah, they go against all the rules, everything, mm -hmm. society, and they're just like I'm doing my own thing, you know. And they, uh, it's yeah. <laughs> gives us average Joe's hope. <laughs> I'm just mm -hmm. <laughs> totally kidding. But anyways, great episode, man. Appreciate you. Um, so yeah, guys, definitely take advantage of your resources. Um, you got Pints of Polishing podcast to listen to as well. Uh, that's where you get a lot of these uh, more in-depth discussions as well in the detailing industry from, from guys that know their shit, not some, you know, randos that uh, just learned how to public speak. You know, these are these are guys that were in the trenches, learn things and, and give away information and knowledge, you know, for free. Well, we didn't stay in the trenches or the gutter. Yeah, actually, you know what? That's a key part right there, though. Yeah, that's because, the key part. Yeah, because we're not we, grinding. We all climb now. Exactly. Yeah. You know, by the way, since you coined that, man, I've been using that with everybody. When someone tells me that, oh, my business is kind of hard right now or someone like you climbing or grinding, you know, and then we get in this whole debate about it and stuff. It's, it's pretty awesome, man. And it's, it it's is. Yeah. all industries. Like I, I talk to, you know, roofers, I talk to plumbers, whatever it is. And well, the AC guy, that's why I just had it with when they were yeah, here. It's perspective. It is. Yeah. And he was telling me the same thing. His business was doing okay. And yeah, but uh, it just made me think of, I had one more tip next nope, week you're done i, I know I'm, I'm cut off now yeah yeah <laughs> all right we'll see you next week i'll put a pin in it all right it's about word of mouth all right i'll see you next week <laughs> see ya <laughs>